how we start off by going over the vocabulary. Okay. Um, sort of use these words in the context of the story. Okay. So, um, if you can think of an instance in which you would use this word or sentence or some way in which it would work, uh, go ahead and offer up something that sort of oversees the entire novel. Okay. One of the themes that is sort of reiterated. These things that are happening at night. Okay. Um, pillage. To loot, to rob property. Who does this? At the beginning, when they have to leave their houses. Right. At the very beginning, they have to leave their houses. What does he say is going to happen? The townspeople are going to come in and just take all their All the people that aren't Jewish are going to come in and just take all their stuff. Okay, they're making all that food. They okay? have all their other possessions. Fear that the townspeople would just come in and take that. Uh, what I want you guys to do is consider when you watch this, uh, what does it do well? What does it do really well? How could it help somebody that is using it? And what does it not do well? If you were to only use this as, you, uh, as your only way for looking at the novel, okay, what would this, uh, what would be missing? down something that this video does particularly well, and what is something that would be missing if, it used, if you used it as the only way to comprehend the story. Okay, you guys can continue writing. What is something that you wrote down that it does particularly well? What is something that this video really does well? Go ahead. It gives you a pretty nice, broad overview, so you kind of get what the sense of the book is. Okay, you get a general sense of what the book is. It can understand what it's basically about. What else does it do well? Get the main points. And it works in chronological order. Okay, it works in chronological order, and you get the main points. Because you can understand exactly what the topics are of the novel. Gives you good visuals to go along with it. Okay, uh, so you're not only getting the bare facts, but you're also uh, maybe able to understand them visually. Okay, uh, what else does it have? Kind of going along with visually. And here, okay, it has music to set the tone. Right? So, yes, it has music to set the tone. Uh, what doesn't it do very well? I think that if you only use that, the book would be near as powerful because you're not getting all the details. Okay, because you're not getting the details, the book wouldn't be nearly as powerful. Good shot. Okay, it's hard to understand that the relationships that people have. You get the characters, you get what's happening, okay, but you don't understand the relationship. You don't understand why certain things are happening. For instance, this tells you that Ellie went into surgery, and it tells you that they were rushed out of the camp. Do you have any idea that they had an option? That their experience with the Holocaust could have ended right there? No. Okay, so that would be an instance of something. Do you have a sheet of paper? We're going to go back to them and write a little something in a little bit. Okay. As well, give the rations to somebody with a fighting chance. Blame them? What do you think? Who's that fault? Yes, this is different. Uh, okay, putting him out of his misery. Who, Ellie, would be putting him out of his misery? By taking his rations. By taking his rations. Well, what would the Nazis be doing then? So, we've had different reactions, okay? We think the Nazis are keeping, not giving him his rations, that's cruel. Ellie taking his rations, though, <coughs> is different from that. Why? He's bettering himself. 
Go ahead, Dan. Because Ellie, Ellie's been, okay, Ellie is benefiting himself. Go ahead, Dan. Because there's a choice involved with Ellie eating his father's rations. There's not a choice for the Nazis? Yeah, for them it's just a technical thing. Oh, hey, he's sick. We're just not going to give him food. Ellie has that choice of, hey, I can either eat my dad's rations or I can give it to him. Okay. The Nazis are also choosing, if they keep more rations, they can give rations to other people. So, yeah, but they're thinking of benefiting everyone by not giving his dad. Benefiting food. everyone? Okay, rather than benefiting Ellie. Yeah. But we're okay with Ellie being benefited. Go ahead, Nate. Technically, if he takes his dad rations too, he can be killed for it because he would be taking more than his dad. So if he was caught taking his father's rations as well, he could be killed for it. So then we think it's okay that Ellie would take his rations? It's not necessarily okay, it's just a better option. Better option. Okay. But why do you think we feel this? Because we're not in the situation, we're looking at it. Yeah, we're looking at it. From whose point of view? Ours. We're looking at it from our point of view, or are we looking at it from Ellie's point? Ellie's. I would say at this point, the reader, you're looking at it from that first person narration. You are becoming very close with Ellie. So then, in our mind, okay, this is the type of things to think about when you're reading and looking at point of view. In our mind, it's okay if Ellie takes the rations from his father, putting him out of his misery. That's okay. If the Nazis are put taking his rations, putting him out of his misery, then it's not okay. But that's the mindset of the reader, right? And that's the difference between reading something in uh, first person or looking at it from a main character's point of view. Right. Okay, so be aware of those different things when you're reading. Question it from a different point of view, from a third person point of view, that kind of thing. I'm going to read okay, chapter 8 of this summary. I want you guys to do the same thing you just did. Alright? Same thing you just did. He wakes up to find his, that his father has been taken to the crematory. To his shame, he does not cry. Instead, he feels relief. So go ahead and write something. That One day, I was able to get up. After gathering all my strength, I wanted to see myself in the mirror hanging on the opposite wall. I had not seen myself since the ghetto. From the depths of the mirror, a corpse gazed back at me. The look in his eyes as they stared into mine has never left me. Thoughts? Is this a fitting ending? Why is it fitting? Okay, so he doesn't even recognize himself, right? He's changed so much that he doesn't even recognize the person he was. Why else? What about the corpse? His faith is dead. His faith, his entire, his faith was his life, right? That's what we learned at the beginning. His life is sucked out of him. His faith is sucked out of him. Okay, last night on the blog, I asked you guys to write a lasting scene or image okay, from this story. Something that you would remember, something that stuck out to you. What are some of the things? What are some of the things that stick out to you? They're all struggling. Right. Okay. That would be a scene that would exemplify the entire text. Yes. See the kid dying. Right underneath their eyes. Okay. Um, what else? The burning bodies. Okay. A lot of, or three of you at least post on the blog about remembering the burning bodies in the ditch. Okay. Obviously, it has a big effect on Ali. He says that he'll never forget that first night. That is one of the first things he sees. Okay. The burning bodies and the dead body. Okay, guy on the train with his son, and they both end up dying together. Something that would be pretty common for this. Okay, you get that sense of camaraderie that you get from Ellie and his father. And then 
as soon as they lose that, they don't have the one thing that they were living for, they lose themselves to say. Okay. I appreciate your guys' work on this book. If you could just hand up your writing activities, I'll give you credit for that.